The first wild beaver colony to live on an English river for 400 years could be threatened by raw sewage spills that can cause serious health problems. Wildlife experts are warning sewage works in Honiton made spills 137 times last year. Reveals Devon, Wild, reveals Devon Wildlife Trust. The River Otter is the site of the official beaver trial reintroduction. In a statement, the Devon Wildlife Trust said, pollution into any river or stream is a serious issue. The UK's rivers are in a deplorable state. Clean watercourses are vital for the people and communities who live alongside them, as well as for the wildlife that they support. The River Otter in East Devon supports a population of beavers. This is despite recent and historical releases into it of sewage and other pollutants from other sources such as runoff from farmland. We will continue to monitor the local beaver population to see if there's a detectable impact from recent incidents. Meanwhile, Southwest Water, which is the water provider for the area, said looking after the environment was its top priority and that it was focused on reducing pollution through its upstream thinking catchment management programme. It said there are many wild living beavers across the rivers throughout the southwest. As they are expanding to new territories, we are totally committed to the sustainable management of wild living beavers and supporting their habitats due to the multiple potential beneficial impacts beavers can have on rivers. We show this commitment through our attendance at multiple regional management groups for beavers and we proudly financially support the Tamar Beaver Management Group, which exists to help landowners and river stakeholders with the challenges wild living beavers can sometimes present. Joining us now is Ashley Smith, who is the chairman of the Windrush Against Sewage campaign. Good evening. Hi there. Um, it seems that um, everybody's telling us that they're concerned. Uh, what's really going on? Well, I, I've heard that. I've heard those numbers. That's a terrible um, amount of untreated sewage. I mean, that number indicates that there's a really serious problem at Honiton. You're talking about roughly the equivalent of about three months of untreated sewage going into the River Otter. And that's, that's way over the sort of uh, threshold of, of it only happening in exceptional circumstances to stop people's homes from flooding. That's much more indicative of a huge lack of investment, which we know exists right across the water industry. Yeah, there's an old saying, isn't there, that dilution is the solution to pollution. But as we've seen from COP26, that doesn't wash anymore. No, I think the dilution is going into the legislation and that's, that's what we fear now with the Environment Bill. We've actually got very good law that we could apply right now. It's, it's um, strangled by government policy, which has really made pollution the profitable activity. And you can't blame private industry, which are the companies are actually monopolies. You can't blame them for exploiting the obvious way to make money. And I've heard plenty of admissions, including from senior water industry executives that sweating the assets is the model that they've applied, which means cutting corners, basically. I mean, it's quite interesting, isn't it, that in Parliament recently, MPs were criticised for failing to support an environmental bill that would place legal duties on companies to reduce discharges. It, it was really, it was a real turning, turning point because that really fired public opinion up to realise that they, they had the choice and, and easily... Uh, we could get the investment back into the industry if only the government would bring in clear legislation. There's another vote on Monday. The same thing's going to come up. Um, but we, we fear that once again, then we'll end up with the, the weakened version and we won't have the clear guidelines that we even know the water industry wants. They want to be told what to do because they know, then they know they've got to do it. There's no corner cutting. They have to get the money in. And we know from the water industry people we meet, the professionals, they can do a great job and they want to do a great job. It, it's just that kind of failure of, of regulation. And that could so very easily be changed. I mean, I mean, it is easy to be part of a campaign which has the backing of the public to call for cleaner rivers. But, but how would you solve the problem? 
Dare I say it? What's the solution? Well, well, <laughs> well basically, uh, oh, the, uh, earlier in the year, DEFRA, the government admitted that there had been a, a lack of investment over, over, over decades. So uh, the water industry has taken out about £60 billion profit. Now we're talking about, it's like not servicing your car for 10 years. You're going to get a big bill eventually, or you're going to have to spend some money. And this is the point we're at. So it is all about, a lot of it is about fixing broken pipes. There's a lot of blame shifted onto the Victorians. Let's be honest, it's not their fault. They couldn't predict our stupidity. And actually, if you look at somewhere like Honiton, take a look on the satellite image. You won't see a lot of Victorian houses there. A lot of this has been about the development that took place in the 50s up till around about now. And it's that, that corner cutting, expecting an infrastructure that's been now in private hands for over 30 years to have what, healed itself. So it, it never received the investment it needed. And this is where we are. So it we, needs we, an injection of cash, but that's possible. Otherwise, what is the point of privatization if you cannot yeah. bring investment in? I mean, and the bill payer can pay yeah. maybe a bit more, but uh, not the numbers that anywhere near the numbers that have been used to frighten the public. Just a few minutes ago, we were talking about house building, and clearly, you know, that's also putting pressures on our river. I'm just going to, to ask our panellists what they think. Laura, Laura, what do you make about this issue? I mean, the, 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 the river we're talking about here, the River Otter, I know it very well. It's absolutely stunning. It's a beautiful river. I, I just couldn't believe that only 14% of our rivers are in good ecological health. Now... Obviously, this is about the wildlife. It's, you know, it's, it's a big, complex issue as well, but it's also about us. So the Environment Agency Chief of Staff um, said in, in response to, are oh, rivers safe to swim in? Rivers aren't for humans. They're for the wildlife. They're not, they're not for human swimming. And I was really shocked because I, I think that, for a start, that would be like a measure of how, how safe and clean it is. And why shouldn't rivers be for people to swim in? I don't want to bring it to a kind of selfish point of view, but I like river swimming. I did a lot of river <laughs> swimming last summer, um, and I'm lucky enough to be, you know, 20 minutes down the road from lovely rivers, the River Way, if you know it. And there were so many people using the rivers during lockdown because it gave you this glorious sense of freedom and connection with nature. And now I'm wondering what I might have swallowed. Yeah. I mean, it's fascinating, <laughs> isn't it? Last year, people engaged with nature yeah. in a way they hadn't for decades yeah. and now they're starting to look with their own eyes to feel on their skin if things aren't clean and they're starting to pay, pay, pay attention to this. But I thought it was just, uh, I used to live in a place where the water ran orange and I wouldn't let my dog, she was desperate, she's a Labrador Ray, you know what Labradors yep, are like, I see do. a river, they want to be yep, in it and I wouldn't let her go in it because it was orange and I thought it was just a localised problem to do with pollution in the environment and I did live in not a particularly wealthy area but then when you find out you, you know like you said only 14 percent are actually fit for never mind humans what about the labradors Dr. laura that's what i say you Even know more important. it's quite shocking when you look at it yeah i think obviously uh, clean water is everything isn't it it's, it's one of those vital requirements for life and uh, you have such beautiful water down in devon uh, the thought that somebody would would spill sewage into that untreated is just appalling It's across the country. It's, it's everywhere you look. If you look at the Rivers Trust map, if you put, is my river fit to play in into the internet, you'll see a map of your area and you'll see how much untreated sewage goes in all over the, the country. It's unnecessary. The idea, okay, the idea that rivers are only for wildlife. Well, hang on a minute. How are we treating that wildlife? Exactly um, what, what it, do they, they don't get a text to say, get out the river, there's a whole bunch of untreated sewage coming. I'm also reminded of the news that came out about the river that passes through the Glastonbury Festival being so polluted by uh, MDMA and cocaine that it was affecting the reproduction of eels, uh, allegedly. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> We have to take proper care of our water, don't we? That's, that's the bottom line in this message. Um, how can people pay more regard to this? Well, I, I think people can definitely think about what they put down their, their, their toilet. Uh, it's not a bin, it's a toilet. Um, also, you can look at some of the labelling of the things you buy. Some of them, they, they ought to be stopped at source, but they're labelled un, you know, unsuitable to go into rivers. They're harmful to aquatic life and long-lasting effects. What on earth are we doing putting that stuff into our, our waters anyway? Plus, um, we, we know that every 100 houses will bring roughly 30 tonnes of extra sewage per day. 
to a, a system that's all, already overflowing. So I think the investment needs to get ahead of the demand because the water industry is basically ready to take the money, but it's not ready to deliver the, the service. So I think the tipping point is all about public opinion because when you tell people about this, they're shocked and horrified. And it is a voting issue. It's starting well, to trouble government that people are surprisingly this, upset that their this, rivers are being used as a, this, as a toilet this week, and it's not this safe. Week, this is spray. very much on the agenda, isn't it? So fingers crossed that people start to actually... Um, take an interest 